Do you cut corners? Sharon Horn Elsham here. Welcome to day 1169 of What You Have to Now. Documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business and corporate world of business to the online world of business and that adventure and the adventure, what I'm doing, what I'm working on, what works, what doesn't work, what I've tried, what I haven't tried. After 1169 days, I've obviously done a lot of things, tried a lot of things. Some have worked, some have not. Uh, some have been really successful, some have been epic crash and burns. So my question for you today is, do you cut corners? Uh, to me, the online world is a huge opportunity to be more efficient, more effective, and continually improve, which is not cutting corners. Although a lot of people online go online to cut corners in terms of them being successful with respect to making money and doing business when they don't really have the experience and the credentials and the understanding of what it takes to actually create a business. This is, of course, just my opinion, but there's a lot of corner cutting that goes on in the internet world and online, online, I guess, in computers and online. So I was thinking this about this today because this was our idiom for supersize your business. Now, I have done lots of idioms, done the meaning and discussed the meanings of a lot of words over the last couple of years. I think we're on probably 800 and some idioms that we've discussed. And today, last night, I'd run out of, I did 100 proverbs. So the first 100 days of the year, we did a different proverb every day. The most popular proverbs, not, not all, but the most popular proverbs of globally, not just with respect to business. And my challenge was to take those and say, well, how would that apply to business? And then last night, since I'd run out of my 100, I, I did a little searching, a little studying to say, okay, well, what are some of the most popular business idioms? I came up with a list of 50, 55 of the most popular business idioms. And I'll research that and add to it. What happens when I do a list like that? We get duplicates, things I've already done before. And I don't like doing things I've already done before. I like to find new idioms, at least with respect to this project. Some projects, yes, I love to do the same thing over and over and over again. If it, especially if it works and it's making me money, I just do that same thing over and over again. And guess what? I don't do it over and over again. I do it until I get it mastered. Then I automate it and I let it just keep working in my life in the background. I don't personally do it over and over and over again. So with these idioms, I'm, I'm using it as a way to help me be sharper and more open-minded and more flexible in my thinking in terms of how does this thing apply to me, my life, and my business. Now, cutting corners, I never thought of it as cutting corners because cutting corners has a, a real, actually it has a pretty negative connotation. It comes from the driving world where you want to get somewhere faster, get from point A to point B quickly, so you cut off a corner and you go the shortest, fastest route to from point A to point B. So as the crow flies from point A to point B is the fastest, shortest route. But when we have to drive and use roads and things like that, sometimes we'll go fast around corners instead of stopping and turning sharply like we normally turn a corner uh, and we just fly through it. Uh, and that can lead to challenges, right? I am a product of the quality field where everything is about ensuring the quality and the experience for the customer is the best it can possibly be. So we're always optimizing that experience and everything we do along the way, we, we can't cut corners if it's gonna negatively impact the customer experience. But cutting corners, the definition of it, and they've actually done scientific studies on it, uh, is gonna lead to less quality results. So when we say cutting corners, it's got a negative connotation, but when I say continuous improvement, I think continuous improvement is the opposite of cutting corners. I just thought of that now. It absolutely positively is. And I always say we wanna look for ways to continually improve, finding better, faster, easier, more efficient, more effective ways of doing everything that we do. And I firmly believe that everything that we do in any area and aspect of our life, not just business, there is a faster, easier, more efficient, more effective way of doing that. And that's still giving us the quality and the output that we want but finding better, faster, easier ways of doing it. That's different than cutting corners. Cutting corners is doing it fast, easy, uh, and, and cutting out some of the necessary things because you want to save yourself time, money, resources, energy, whatever it is. And they actually did some scientific studies, and I'm going to look because I was shocked at the, the, the reference, the, how they drew this together, the conclusions they made. They did scientific studies, and they said that Employees or people who tend to uh, cut corners or are corner cutters 
tend to be morally compromised, low in conscientiousness, self-focused, and impulsive with the potential for quarter cutting to increase risks. I'm like, okay, well, that's not anything I want to do or I want people in my organization to do. So I've got a new uh, feeling about the expression and the saying or the idiom to cut corners or cutting corners. To me, yeah, we're not cutting corners. We are continuously improving and those are very different things. So my question for you is, do you cut corners? Do you cut corners in any area or aspect of your life? And I would have to say, I am absolutely positively guilty. I didn't realize I was a corner cutter until I had a sudden cardiac arrest. I was cutting corners with my physical well-being and my health. I was not eating right. I was not sleeping. I was not taking care of myself. I was not exercising. I was not hydrating or drinking water. I wasn't doing any of the things that I know and we always know that I needed to do to take care of myself. And all of that neglect, cutting corners, you know, grabbing a bag of chips and Diet Coke and coffee just to keep my energy up so I could keep moving through my day caught up with me and that and throw on all the stress of different businesses and court cases and things and whammo, sudden cardiac arrest because I was cutting corners with my health. I wasn't cutting corners in my business, but I was cutting corners in my health. The energy I was stealing from my health to use in my business was a huge corner cutting, an example of corner cutting. And so I was being unsafe and compromising my health on a subconscious level. Of course, nobody would conscientiously or consciously do that. You know, when we grab the bag of chips, when we grab the <clears throat> the pop or the coffee, as I'm going to have a sip of coffee, we aren't consciously doing something that's not good for us. Now, I did find out, I actually gave up coffee for five years after I had my sudden cardiac arrest, thinking it was bad for me. And then I found out later on, actually when I first started going online, when I was online, I had another health challenge where I couldn't walk for like a, a three week period and then I could get out of bed after three weeks but I still was struggling for a few months but <clears throat> I found during my study and my research in that situation that <clears throat> coffee was actually good for me so guess what I started doing drinking coffee again because coffee is actually good for my blood type and my health and my energy and things so cutting corners want to know <clears throat> if you're willing to be brutally honest with yourself like I was with myself and I continue to be, am I cutting corners? And I still am in other areas and aspects of my life as well. I have adopted over, especially the last year, um, do what you can with what you've got right now as a philosophy. Because COVID shut off a lot of our ways of doing things the old way, right? And we had to learn new ways of doing things. So I adopted the philosophy that I'm going to do what I can with what I've got right now. And I probably adopted it a little before COVID, but it really kicked into high gear during COVID. And as, since we're still in the era of COVID and COVID derivatives and vaccines and masks and all of it, depending on where you live, uh, it hasn't gone away. We still need to continue to move and morph and grow in the direction that we need to, to continue to live our lives and make our lives work. So some of the things that if I'm honest with myself that I've cut corners on, I need to look at those and say, hmm, yes, that worked to do what you can with what you've got right now for a period of time. But at what point do you click that into, okay, I've been doing this long enough. Now I need to formalize or make this better. My backdrop would be a huge example of that, right? My podcast that has, I don't even know how many, over 100,000 um, downloads already, but it still doesn't have an intro or an outro. There's, there's no nothing professional about my podcast. And so there's things that I know that, yep, you did that to get by for a certain period of time, but at what point do you stop cutting corners and, yeah, you've done it, and now you start to clean it up and make it more professional and make it look and be the way you want it to be as you can add resources and do things to make it better. So that's an example of what started out as a positive that over time can morph into an absolute excuse for cutting corners, right? To me, reasons and excuses are justification for procrastination, cutting corners and things like that. So I need to start holding myself a little bit more accountable, just like we all do, right? We're all human beings. We have areas and aspects of our life that we let slip sometimes. And uh, I am no exception, right? We're, we're all human. We do that. But as soon as I catch myself, then I don't have the excuse of not knowing anymore and I need to do something about it. So there's a couple areas in my life like cleaning up my social media, 
cleaning up my podcast, putting an intro and an outro on it, doing things like that. And, and why haven't I done that? I've got all the reasons and excuses for why I haven't done that. Mostly because I personally don't know how and I don't want to spend the time and energy devoted to adding that. And then I have to edit every single video before I could get it up and things like that. And that's the kind of thing that I just need to hand off to the team and let the team take care of all those things. And going forward, that's what we'll be doing. But not yet, not yet. Uh, what else? Today's 365-day uh, challenge, the one thing every day that centers you, was about kindness and about have you ever received a kindness? And if so, did you keep it and hoard it and enjoy it or did you pass it on? Uh, there's a lot of cool examples of that uh, in my life where I have received a kindness and I've gone ahead and passed it on. Have you ever been through the drive through and somebody paid for your coffee or your uh, lunch or something and then you pay for the next person? There's actually a story online I don't, not too long ago about... Uh, a place, I think it was here in the Twin Cities in, in Minnesota, believe it or not. It was before all the crap that went down in 2020. I know that. It's been a long time ago now. Where 200 and some people in line had paid for the next person in line, paid it forward. And so that was a great story. And, and we like to see more and more of that going on. Yep, we receive a kindness, but let's turn around and be kind to someone else in return. Guess what? It's just as easy to be kind. It's actually easier to be kind and be a good human being than it is to be a schmuck. I, I think that's really interesting that people don't realize it's a whole lot easier to treat people the way you want to be treated and be yourself than it is to be a, a Dorcas or an ass. It, it just is. Uh, what else have we got going on? So supersize your business, come up with new idioms for that. Um, oh, my coaches, I didn't really do much with my training and coaching yesterday. And I hate to admit that, but I did hang out with my daughter and my granddaughter the day, for the day. And so that was awesome and fun and exciting as it always is we only had two diaper blowouts which that's a that's a lot for a day we'll have one here and one there but yesterday we had two so lessons learned there we need to continually improve our baby diaper changing watching blowout face or something that's all i've got if i can help you anyway hit me up ask in the comments below i want to hop to and and it's sunday in my neck of the woods so i want to do some uh, training and some planning and, and some things that make me feel like I'm moving forward in my life, that I am continually improving, not cutting corners or catching up. Uh, so I wish you an amazing day. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow and let you know what she up to. Take care.